Good morning, Joe. We are starting out dry this morning and warm. You've got some dry roads in Branson this morning with sunshine coming through the cloud cover. It is 68 degrees there right now with some of those uh, calm winds. It is 72 degrees in Rawa, 66 degrees in Mountain Grove, 69 degrees in Monette, and 68 degrees to start this morning in Springfield. Dew points are right behind those temperatures in the middle and upper 60s. So that tells us that it is a little bit humid out there this morning and you can see some of these oranges on the muggy meter map. So again, it is a, a pretty humid. At the pool today, you'll have mostly sunny skies. Isolated storms are possible, but most of us will be dry. That high up around 90 degrees and a very high UV index of 10. As you fire up the grill, again, an isolated storm chance. Um, you're looking at things staying pretty muggy as we head into the evening hours. Any storms that do pop will collapse once the sun sets. So a couple of showers and storms possible today. That high gets to about 90 degrees. Storms collapse this evening. You're dry overnight with that low around 70 degrees. An isolated storm chance again tomorrow with that high back around 90. You're mostly sunny for the next three days with very small isolated storm chances, really just fueled by the heat and humidity of the day. So we'll have that be the case through Wednesday. Any storms would be capable of locally heavy rain and lightning. Your unsettled pattern comes back with some healthier storm chances by Thursday and Friday. We'll have more clouds and more of us getting in on some of those storms. Then the heat will crank as you head into next weekend, hot and humid with highs back in the lower 90s. So staying hot this week, highs around 90. Uh, you might find some upper 80s Thursday and Friday with more cloud cover around. Then you're hot again by next weekend with highs back in the lower 90s. Here's your seven day forecast, much of the same. Today, tomorrow and Wednesday, sunshine and isolated storms, healthier storm chances by Thursday and Friday, and then the heat comes back as you head towards that weekend. Joe. Over 9,000 Missouri workers in the clean energy industry have filed for unemployment due to the coronavirus. One in six are now out of work. The industry was growing at a fast rate before this pandemic, even faster than the total statewide employment, actually. Michaela Priskel with Environmental Entrepreneurs says job losses in the industry are significant, but she's hopeful that it will get back on its legs. If we are going to make the impact on climate change that our country and the state of Missouri needs to see, then we need to make sure that the clean energy workforce not just comes back, but comes back better and stronger than it was before. Missourians claiming unemployment are once again required to perform work search activities to receive benefits. This includes for the $600 federal supplement that's available until the 25th of this month. The requirement was temporarily lifted because of the pandemic. It's back in place as of today. Individuals need to complete three work search activities each week while getting unemployment. That includes searching for work online, taking part in a Missouri Job Center workshop, or attending a job interview or job fair. Missouri Job Centers will host two virtual fairs, July 22nd and August 5th. Online sign-up is available to those interested. Got some more potential COVID-19 community exposures to tell you about. Between June 29th and July 3rd, four positive individuals visited several locations throughout Springfield, including Sam's Clubs, Walmarts, Kingdom Coffee, Menards, and several stores in the Battlefield Mall. For all these specific dates and times, you can find this story on OzarksFirst.com for you. Putting crime into focus for you, a man charged with first-degree murder after a shooting in Bolivar earlier this year is to be arraigned in court later today. 20-year-old Michael Ybarra was arrested at an apartment a few hours after the shooting. Witnesses say they saw Ybarra shoot 35-year-old Joshua Phillips multiple times. They also say that as Ybarra ran away, a bucket of white paint spilled. Police found footprints of white paint outside of the apartment where they arrested him, as well as white paint on a pair of his boots. Police found a 9mm handgun in his possession too, and 9mm shell casings were found near Phillips' body. In taking a look around the region for you, at least 21 people were shot during the 4th of July weekend in St. Louis. Seven of the victims died from those injuries. The violence began just before noon on Friday. Two teens were killed and a four-year-old is in critical condition after being shot in the head by what officers are saying may have been a stray bullet. And in New York City, dozens of people were shot over the weekend. At least nine victims died there. 
We need to have an emergency meeting with the police commissioner, as well as all of the organizations that are associated with dealing with violence in the city to map out a real plan of dealing with gun violence. Shootings are up 140% and shooting victims are up nearly 160% over this time last year. President Trump said the federal government will step in to help if needed. Multiple fire crews continue to fight against a growing brush fire in Gilroy, California. The so-called Cruise Fire began Sunday and has exploded to over a thousand acres. Cal Fire says that it had already burned a few structures and is threatening homes, forcing residents to evacuate. In some news from around the world for you here, nearly 40 people are feared dead as torrential rains continue to hit a portion of Japan. Riverbanks are at risk of bursting and new evacuation orders have been put into place for this. Flooding and mudslides that began over the weekend have killed 21 people so far. Another 18 are also presumed dead pending official confirmation. 13 other people are also missing. More than 800 have been rescued. With coronavirus cases increasing in Australia's Victoria state and Melbourne in particular, officials will be closing the border between Victoria and New South Wales starting tomorrow. That effectively cuts Victoria off from the rest of the country. 127 new cases were reported in Victoria yesterday and officials have locked down several public housing towers, not even allowing residents to leave there. The Louvre Museum in Paris reopened today after a nearly four month lockdown. Customers at the world's most visited museum must wear face masks and follow a one way system through certain rooms. The museum says time specific slots will allow it to control numbers at peak periods and capacity will be deliberately limited to 30%. Back to some more local news for you. Missouri State and OTC will announce return to campus plans today. MSU President Cliff Smart will release the return to campus guide, while OTC Chancellor Hal Higdon will communicate with faculty, staff, and students. Both will outline plans for a smooth and safe return to campus in August. That's the goal for them. A critical blood shortage continues throughout the Ozarks with more than 8,000 donations lost since the pandemic began back in March. CBCO hopes its 16th annual Bleed Red Blood Drive will help build back up its reserves. All donors this week will get two tickets to a 2021 Springfield Cardinals game along with a shirt and some other giveaways. Chris Pilgrim says the Bleed Red Drive is one of the largest drives it hosts all year. Our Bleed Red Blood Drive is the most popular blood drive that we have, and we see the most people. Now, it's changed a little bit this year. Instead of a two-day event, we're going an entire week so we can maintain social distancing. Drive starts today and goes through Friday. CBCO encourages you to make an appointment if you want to give this week. You can do that online at cbco.org slash bleed red or find this story over on ozarksfirst.com. Let's get to a traffic alert for you now. Drivers in Nixa can expect potential delays near US 160 and South Street beginning today. MoDOT will be adding turn lanes and new traffic signals at that intersection there. South Street may be closed for up to two days as the storm drain pipe is installed as well. The project is expected to be completed by this November. And in Ozark, MoDOT will be widening Missouri Route 14 beginning today. The route will be widened to five lanes between 32nd Street and the Finley River Bridge. Lane closings can be expected and side streets and sidewalks will be closed at times too. Expected completion date is July 2021. Here's a look at what's coming up for you on CBS This Morning. Coming up, we talk with the mayor of Miami about the steps he's taking to slow the spread of COVID-19 in his city. Plus, how Italy is reopening famous tourist destinations with new safety measures. Coming up on CBS This Morning. All right, we take a look at uh, what's trending right now for everyone before we plead for your wagging and walking pictures right now. But uh, this is video that you've seen from over the weekend here. A crowd used ropes to pull down a statue of Christopher Columbus in Baltimore over the weekend. Pulled down and tossed into a harbor, Maryland's governor called the action completely unacceptable and also the antithesis of a democracy. Remember, the president signed an executive order saying that you can have up to a 10-year prison sentence if you're caught defacing or vandalizing or taking down any of these statues and monuments there. Another big trend that everyone's talking about, Ennio Miracone. Miracone, I believe is the proper name. 
famous composer, died at 91 years old. Uh, very well known for the scores that he's been able to compose and direct for several movies. I believe he won the Oscar for Quentin Tarantino's The Hateful Eight. So oh, wow. Not too bad there, yeah. Also, people um, talking about the death of Nick Cordero on Twitter a lot this morning as well. Right. He was the Broadway actor um, who very publicly struggled with COVID-19 really since March, right? Yeah, he's, uh, he was in a hospital for three months fighting the coronavirus there. Very sad. Mm -hmm. Uh, what else do we have looking at here as we uh, get moving on this Monday morning? Uh, we put back the wagging and walking forecast. Um, this is something new that you'll find on OzarksFirst.com. If you go to the website, go up to the weather tab, and mm -hmm. then on the weather tab, there is a wagging and walking tab where you'll find your dogs, pictures, so many pictures of dogs. It's easy to upload just yeah, right there, just right? Just upload a picture yeah. of your pup. Tell me what his name is, where do you guys uh, walk, and that's mm -hmm. about it. So this is Rex catching a Frisbee, and you can send me <laughs> your pictures on OzarksFirst.com. That's good. I like the action shot from Rex, so, you know, get creative with it. Send those pictures on in. And then uh, I got to tell you, getting out the door today, it's going to be pretty warm starting the morning each day this week, right? Yeah, you're looking at overnight lows only dropping into the 70s, so no relief there. Um, highs up around 90 Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday with an isolated storm possible. Um, you'll have healthier storm chances by Thursday and Friday, and then it looks hot again as we head into the weekend. All right, classic July stuff, you'd say, right? What's uh, our yeah. average around now? Oh, like 88, so mm -hmm. about average, if not a little bit hotter. Okay, there's there you go. Starting off a Monday morning. Thank you for starting your week with us right now, everyone. All your news always on OzarksFirst.com. We'll see you back here with more news soon.